Here in Tororo district in eastern Uganda, in Paya sub-county, soil is the cornerstone of food security and income. While everything looks green and fertile this time of the year, land degradation and loss of soil fertility are serious concerns for farmers because they contribute to low crop yields and food insecurity. This is the village leader, Osege Matias. Uh, in the past 20 years ago, one could get like uh, 25 bags from one acre plot. But it's uh, not easy now to get even 10. Most people get between 4 and 6 bags of 100 kilograms. So that shows the uh, fertility decline in the soils. This film is about Elena Anderson's PhD project in sustainability science, which focuses on how smallholder farmers experience the challenges of land degradation and on their strategies to deal with these problems. Sustainability science is an interdisciplinary research field that combines critical and problem-solving research to better understand complex sustainability challenges of our world, while also looking for creative solutions. In this case, an approach called action research has been employed to involve farmers in all steps of the research process in order to generate relevant and usable knowledge. In other words, to put knowledge into action. Nearly everyone in Paya relies on smallholder farming for their livelihoods. Cassava, maize and millet are common crops. Farming is done mainly by hand and very few farmers use fertilizer or other inputs. This dependence on rain-fed agriculture means that farmers are particularly vulnerable to climatic variations. Life in Paya is busy. Besides farming, people engage in a variety of activities such as petty trading, brick making, tailoring and charcoal production. But poverty is widespread and people are struggling in an environment ridden with high disease burdens, weak rural support services, poor road infrastructure and uncertain market conditions. In addition, future climate change is likely to have major negative impacts on agricultural production, water availability and human health, leading to even more vulnerability. Land degradation is about more than just the soil which means it cannot be understood as an isolated challenge when trying to come up with solutions. Farmers' everyday realities must therefore be the starting point for understanding the problem. A group of farmers, together with Elina, have identified some underlying causes of land degradation and soil fertility loss, looking at how complex the problems really are. One major cause identified by farmers is the continuous and intensive cultivation of farmland. Traditionally, land in Paya was abundant and farmers relied on shifting cultivation and long fallow periods to allow the soil to rest and regenerate. But over time, pressure on land has increased substantially. Most of the forest in the area has now been cleared and turned into farmland. People rely on very small plots of land to grow their food on, at roughly one hectare per household. This means that land must be intensively used in order to meet the food needs of the household. Fallowing is therefore no longer an option. When this village leader, Ocheng Charles Ngreza, established his farm in 1954, Land was not a limited resource, and new land could be taken into production. Many people now, they are lacking food because of their land. They have small lands. Yeah. Uh, 
only one garden, one garden, one garden, using that one for five or six years, no resting. Mm. Mm. Therefore, harvest the food will be little. Mm. That's all. Mm. Insufficient practices to bring nutrients back into the soil is another reason identified by farmers for loss of soil fertility. People do practice a range of methods to take care of their soils, but the available options are often insufficient to maintain soil productivity in the long run. Use of chemical fertilizer is not possible for most households because it is expensive and not always available. The other common alternative, using animal manure, is also not realistic for most farmers. The number of animals have decreased drastically over time, partly due to recurrent disease outbreaks and lack of access to veterinary services. Grazing land is also scarce and the roadsides are often the only available place where farmers can take their animals. Another major cause of soil fertility loss, as pointed out by the farmers, is soil erosion which occurs when nutrient-rich soil is washed away from the fields. In recent years, farmers have noticed that heavy rainfall and flooding have increased, which makes the problem even worse. So, what does soil fertility loss really mean for the individual farmer? Since farming is their main or sometimes only source of food and income, this has serious impacts on the food security and well-being of themselves and their families. In a typical year, about two out of three households experience food shortage. One illustration of changing conditions is the increased importance of cassava. While cassava used to be kept mainly as a resting crop, consumed in times of hardship, its robustness and tolerance to drought and poor soils has now made it a staple crop. We are food insecure and uh, that is one of the consequences of uh, the decline of soil fertility. Because we can no longer produce enough to eat and save for the future in case there is any drought or uh, natural calamity, it's uh, very hard to have enough food to, for, for, for the present and to keep it for the future. This research collaboration has not only been about how societies are affected by environmental change, but also about the strategies individuals and communities use to tackle change. So, one guiding question has been to better understand how smallholder farmers cope with and act with regards to land degradation and food insecurity. One coping strategy that started about 10 years ago is that the people of Paya have organized themselves into farmer groups to help cope with challenges and insecure livelihoods. These groups engage in a number of activities Mainly, but not only women are involved. One important function of these farmer groups is pooling of labor. Sustaining soils is a job that demands a lot of time and effort. By setting up labor pooling schemes, group members help each other out in a rotating schedule. This allows them to coordinate actions and finish important tasks on time. Women are often carrying a heavy workload in agriculture as well as in household tasks. Teamwork can therefore facilitate the adoption of labor-intensive practices such as digging pits and trenches for soil conservation that are crucial for maintaining land productivity over time. Farmer groups also provide strategies for knowledge exchange and joint learning. In a setting like this, where access to agricultural extension services is poor, farmers are largely left without formal technical assistance to invest in farming. 
Informal knowledge sharing and experimentation are therefore incredibly important. You cannot reach many people if you are to move uh, to individual families, but it is very easy when you have uh, farmer groups, the information is easily passed, and even those farmers, they know, they have something, they, at least they know, except that uh, one may know this and the other one doesn't know. The other one may know something else that some, his colleague doesn't know. But when they come uh, in a group, it is very easy to share experiences and uh, to pass on the information to many people at the same time. So coming together in a group has helped us a lot, a lot. By experimenting with new farming practices and crop varieties in gardens that are managed jointly, members can share the risks of trying new things rather than experimenting individually. Groups also play important roles in spreading proven practices to non-members and in this way they act as important change agents in the wider community. Another key function of the farmer groups is their informal savings and loan systems. Although members' weekly savings are small, the system serves as a safety net that helps them to better cope in times of hardship. It facilitates long-term planning and investment in agriculture, which is very important even if such investments can seem minor. Collective saving can also allow groups to buy or rent land which they cultivate together. Especially for widows, this may be the only available strategy they have to increase their access to land, which is otherwise very difficult to obtain. Most farmers in Paya sell some of their produce, but the prices they get are generally very low. Due to poor infrastructure and a lack of access to storage facilities, farmers are in a vulnerable position when taking part in market transactions and typically have to sell their crops through a chain of middlemen. Through joint marketing of crops, farmer groups are able to negotiate better prices and directly connect to larger traders, a strategy that leaves a larger part of the earnings in the hands of the farmers. So now we know something about the problem of soil fertility in Paya and we know what people there are doing to cope with it. The second question in this research project has been to see how we can build on farmers' collective strategies and identify new approaches and practical solutions to support positive change. In other words, how can research contribute to action for sustainability? Grounded in joint understanding of problems and farmers' existing strategies, the research highlighted the need and capacity for development of new soil management practices that make sense in the local setting. What we came up with together was the idea of using human urine as a crop fertilizer. This is something that was not previously done in the area. Inspired by experiences from elsewhere, Elena introduced the idea of this practice to the farmer groups. This created a lot of curiosity amongst farmers and soon a process to test and evaluate the practice was initiated. An experiment where urine fertilizer was compared to other treatments was set up and managed by the group on maize crops. It turned out that the urine is an excellent fertilizer that nearly doubled maize yields when compared to farmers' normal practices and it produced similar or even higher yields than inorganic fertilizer. However, using human waste in food production can be a socially sensitive issue and in the beginning people were a bit shy about it. For example, there was a strong taboo against mixing urine from in-laws with urine from original family members 
which made it difficult to gather all the urine at the household level. After seeing the effects on the crops though, people found ways to challenge and overcome such taboos. Motivated by the fact that urine is a free and constantly available resource that can boost yields and increase food security, even when used on a small scale. Farmers in Pyre have now tried it on a number of different crops with good results. Another reason for its popularity is that urine fertilizer does not require any major investment or changes in existing farming systems, which makes it easy to adopt. Those farmers who initially felt embarrassed about it are now proudly showing the storage drum where they keep the urine. This illustrates how collective action amongst farmers can serve as an important arena for social change. The practice is now spreading, partly through songs and theatre. A workshop that was arranged at the end of the project served as an opportunity to spread the research findings and most importantly, it created a space for the farmer groups to make their activities visible to an audience of district officials and politicians that they seldom have access to. What we can learn from the experience with the UN fertilizer is that problems faced by farmers require locally adapted solutions. Such solutions must be based on farmers' needs and priorities and be tested and evaluated by farmers themselves. In conclusion, this action research process illustrates how learning by doing can be a driver for innovation and local ownership of solutions. A number of different pathways are possible for African agricultural development. Starting in local understandings of problems, recognizing farmers' agency, and co-creating strategies to navigate change are key to seek out such pathways.